What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. So, I got a juicy one for you guys today. We're going to be talking about what happens when male inmates work in a female prison. Also, why would male inmates work in a female prison? I'm gonna break all of that down for you guys today. But before we get into that, if you're new to my channel, my name is Jess, I'm a recovering addict who served time in prison. I'll leave more about my journey and my story in the description box down below. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Just to be clear here, I am talking about my time that I spent in Arkansas, not New York. New York has female maintenance crews. Arkansas does as well, but we're gonna get into all of that in a second. So New York, the women fix everything. They do maintenance, electrical, they do all of that stuff as they should be allowed to in every prison, which is probably the more important reason why I'm making this video because, oh my God. In Arkansas, at McPherson, which is where I did most of my time, across the street from McPherson is a unit called Grimes. Grimes is for men, and then uh, McPherson is for women. So they had a maintenance and electrical team, little crew from Grimes, the male unit, and sometimes they would come over to the female unit. We would periodically see the male crews with a correctional officer from Grimes over into McPherson. Now, they would be working on things like outdoor maintenance or things that the prison deemed too dangerous for women. It's my personal belief that women are just as capable as men to do electrical work or other maintenance. Now, the things that I would see men doing, in my personal opinion, having seen this with my own two eyes day in and day out, serving time in prison, this is my experience, as is every video on this channel. It's from my point of view, it's my experience, it's what I saw. The, jo the jobs that Arkansas deemed that women couldn't do, so they had men come over, were jobs that were not difficult or not jobs that required a very strong person to do, you know what I mean? I don't know what that would be, lifting logs? I don't know, I don't know. Um, they're jobs like painting the outside areas. They're like luxury jobs, not luxury jobs. They were like cush jobs, in my personal opinion, that Arkansas deemed unworthy for women to do. Um, I, I once, while I was serving time there, I once saw the male maintenance crew painting a building outside. Tell me why a woman can't do that. Okay, so, crazy, right? Um, another, another job that I had seen male inmates do in the female facility, in my dorm specifically, they were like replacing light bulbs. So they were on these crazy tall ladder and for whatever reason, McPherson deemed that unsafe for women because they were on a ladder changing these big fluorescent light bulbs. Now in prison, the lights are not like regular light bulbs. They're like these fluorescent, bright, hostile in your face lights, you know, with like the big, long incandescent light bulbs. So the men were replacing those one time. They had also come in to do some electrical stuff um, I'm not exactly sure what it was, but it was definitely like electrician stuff with like wires. Clearly I'm not qualified to do that job, so I understand why I wouldn't be chosen for that because I break most things and I can't be trusted to try to fix anything. I'm probably the person that broke it, so I'm not qualified to do that, but I know so many other women that are electricians or maintenance people or can do that same job that I saw men doing. So that kind of irritated me when I saw men getting these jobs at our prison, at the female facility. Go work at Grimes, bro. Like, why are you even over here? Like, I can change a light bulb. Okay, anyway, what happens when male inmates come into the female unit? So this is typically what happens. If it's in an open dorm, this is what we were told to do. Everyone had to get on their rack which is their bed. So we had to get on our bed. We could not get off of our bed. We had to stay there. And if we tried to get off of the bed, even to go to the bathroom, we were gonna go to the hole. And we knew that. And they came in and gave us this whole speech about it because that's what they do. Now, the male inmates that were working on light bulbs or some electrical crap on the ceiling, they were being supervised by a correctional officer from Grimes unit. So not our correctional officers. So a lot of the women tried to talk to the men the, the male inmate workers, not the male correctional officers, even though that goes down, that's a whole separate video. That's not what we're talking about right now. So a lot of the women in my dorm were like, oh my God, he's so fine, you know? And they were like talking amongst themselves, like, holy crap, this dude's so fine. I remember one guy specifically that was like jacked and you could tell that he had 
you know, he was covered in tattoos, even though he was in a class A. A class A in prison is like your uniform. So we were required to wear long sleeve shirts, um, but this guy had it rolled up a little bit on his wrist. You could see through the very crappy material that he was, you know, he was, he was jacked and he was tatted up. That's my kind of person. So I was like, oh, he's fine. Um, I said that to another friend of mine and they started calling out my bed number. Like, oh, rack 16, what's your number? What's your inmate number? And I died a little bit because I was super embarrassed. And I was like, oh my God, are you insane? Like, I can't say that he's fine without you making a scene because that was my friends. So like, oh my God, I can't say that this guy's cute without you making a scene. Shut up, like, shut up. Oh my God, because they're looking and they're smiling. You know how it is. Um, and the correctional officer that was with these guys, he didn't really say anything because it's not his unit. And we know that. We know it's not this guy's unit. We know that this correctional officer is probably not going to yell at us for talking like our correctional officers do. And that's another really distinct fact about Arkansas prisons. We had an officer get transferred from the Grimes unit to now work at McPherson. He came in with a black eye, so I'm like, oh, someone didn't like what you had to tell them, right? But I heard a lot of the women that I was doing time with ask this officer questions. It, are the rules the same over there? He's like, no, this is a completely different world over here. One thing in particular that I overheard was the ex-Grimes officer that is now an officer at McPherson, he told someone that I was in a dorm with in earshot of me that men don't have to be quiet in the hallway. They can talk as much as they want in the chow hall. And he's like, well, it's a lot harder to control men. <laughs> I'm just like, that's great. High five. Like what? So I had a very hostile mindset about that because it should just be equal. It should just be the same. We should all have the same rules. They shouldn't be screaming in my face for yelling. So, so let's go back to the male inmates working in the female unit doing like little things. My friend had told him like, oh, my rack 16 or whatever I was said, you're so cute or whatever. And I died inside because I was super embarrassed and I just wanted to crawl under the floor. That officer that was with those male workers, he didn't say anything about it. So a few months later, when I had overheard what this ex Grimes officer said, like, oh no, they can do whatever they want to do. They can talk whatever they want to talk, they, whatever. And I just thought, why though? Why are you treating men and women that are in prison completely differently? That it really started to bother me. Why are men working in the female prison, male inmates, why are you bringing them over here at all? Women can do these jobs. I have met, I have met plenty of women that could do all of those things the guys were doing. Like I said, just not me because I'm probably the person that broke the damn thing. But it started to really aggravate me that women are not being treated equally. Now, again, this is my personal opinion from serving time there and being there for a little over two and a half years, I saw how these officers looked at us. I, I heard how they talked to us. And there was just this sense of women are not supposed to be in prison. They're supposed to be at home with children, like in a kitchen. That was the vibe that I personally got, you know? That had even been said to me in church services, not me directly, but to the people that were, were going to church. There was a chaplain there, this is kind of taking a turn, but there was a chaplain there that was since convicted of five inmates at the minimum, one of whom was a dear friend of mine. After my friend got out of prison, she was deported, and that's when she told everybody when she felt safe in her own country, when she felt safe in Mexico, then she came forward and said, whoa, this, this chaplain is doing this. But it was that chaplain that made it very clear that my place is in a kitchen, to be submissive to a man in a kitchen. And I thought, whoa, like this is intense. Oh my God. Like as a New Yorker, I remember sitting there shocked that they were saying these things. I was also shocked that that chaplain received award after award after award for years because his program had a low recidivism rate. He got awards. He was decorated the whole time abusing women. You know, so racism in Arkansas jails and prisons is unbelievable. To say that we can't do the same job Unless you're lifting a tree, bro, like we can do the same job, right? I will forever be grateful for the time that I spent in Arkansas because that time is why you're watching this video. The time that I spent there made me want to talk about prison reform. It made me see like, whoa, whoa, prisons across this country are so messed up. 
to not have clean drinking water, to have a chaplain sexually abusing women, to see male workers being told they can do jobs better than females can was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me with this? The time that I spent there was so traumatizing. I desperately wanted to be transferred out of McPherson and go to Bedford Hills because in New York, that's a prison in New York, I knew about the program that they have there, you get to keep your baby. And a friend of mine, her name is Jen, I'll link her channel down below, shares her story because she had her baby in the prison that I was technically supposed to be at. I was never supposed to be in Arkansas, but I ran from some stuff, from some charges. So I was supposed to be serving time in Bedford. And the whole time I was in county jail in Arkansas fighting my case, I thought, oh my God, what, what did you do? You ran all the way to Arkansas and now you're going to prison in Arkansas and they have no programs for women. They don't even give women tampons or underwear in the county jail. And now I'm gonna have to have a baby ripped away from me after she's born and I was so angry at myself I was so mad that that I had made a series of very bad decisions and it was just really difficult for me in that same breath all of that time all of all of the trauma and the craziness and the sexism and and hearing how these people talk to women in prison it made me want to fight for prison reform and that is my goal on this channel to talk about prison life to talk about what inmates go through to talk about sexism and extremely long and unjust sentences or the conditions in which people have to live one mistake should not define who you are Addicts don't belong in prison, and I will continue to talk about it until I see a complete overhaul of the prison system. I do plan on doing an entire video on that chaplain that I mentioned a second ago so that you guys can really understand how evil that prison is, how corrupt it is, how awful it is. I'm going to end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay sober. Please do not break the law, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.